Right. Way to go, Kyla. Thank you for ringing the bells. I'll take my mask off now. I'm Rob Morrison, the pastor here at the church. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming on board. We're happy to have this worship service today. I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, Paul the Apostle again. And in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul has a vision that night. And in a vision, he hears and sees a man calling out to him, come over, come over, come over to Macedonia. Come over and help us. So Paul leaves the area of Turkey and goes over to Macedonia, which is the area controlled by Rome. And there he goes to Philippi. And that's where our ministry and our story continues for this morning. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being on board. Our prayers for this morning revolve around a lot of people who are hurting, a lot of people who are in the hospital, and in fact, we want to recognize the representative to the Congress, Representative John R. Lewis. Mr. Lewis was the conscience of the whole House of Representatives, and for his life, for his ministry, and for his service, we give thanks. He was 80 years old. He worked and served with Dr. Martin Luther King. And so we remember him at this time in our prayers. We also remember uh, people in our congregation. Carol Heberling, Lord be with her. Pat DiLorenzo, Terry Wagner, all our essential workers and all those who are hurting, we pray for them. So while I pray, I invite you to do the same. You are welcome to call, to text, to tell other people that you're praying for them. And that way we connect. We are together, even though we are distant from each other. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for your grace, for your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, for all the ways that you reach out to us. And we make special prayers, prayers for those who grieve, for those who are sad in the death of loved ones, and especially for those families and those people who remember Representative John R. Lewis. We pray, O oh Lord, for Carol Heberling. Be with her and give her comfort. For Pat DiLorenzo, give him the kind of rehab that he needs. We pray for Terry Wenger. Be with her. For all of us, O oh Lord, who are in hunger and pain and agony, we ask your care. So, O oh Lord, be with us. And hear the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I take off my hat. Again, I, I wear the Trenton Thunder hat just to say, hey, you folks who love baseball, tune in next year and know the Trenton Thunder will be glad to have you. And meanwhile, we'll try to cheer our own teams on in the major league. So uh, I take my hat off to the baseball players. Our Old Testament lesson will be coming from Genesis 39 and 40, where Joseph has been thrown into jail. And it will also relate to 
Dietrich Bonhoeffer's work, letters and papers from prison, and also Dr. Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail. And while these works typify the feelings of those who are in prison, so we also have hymns of comfort. That when people are sad, people are depressed, they need to feel that God is with them. One of my favorite hymns, one of my favorite songs is spiritual that Bob Connor will sing. It's a call song, There Is a Balm, that's B-A-L-M, in Gilead, that makes the wounded whole. Bob? There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel courage and think my works in vain but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again there is a bomb in mentioned, I had the opportunity to talk with Don and Carolyn LaCrosse um, about their experience with pr prison ministry, and it was really an enlightening conversation for me because I learned that most prisons have either a chaplain and many groups that come in, and um, I think that's incredibly important because it gives prisoners the opportunity to learn about Jesus and his unwavering love, um, and I think um, in a place ridden with, you know, depression, anxiety, pain, guilt, anything, you name it. Um, we as sinners ourselves should spread the word of God and spread God's uh, message of mercy and grace and let the prisoners know that 
uh, despite what they've done through Jesus Christ, that they will be forgiven. So thank you again for sitting down and talking with me, and I look forward to uh, learning about how I can help. Thank you, Kyla. Yeah. Well done, well done. And uh, Don on the cross is going to say a few words at the end of my message. So I, I thank both Don and Kyla and Karen. Let's pray. Lord God, as we come to your word, as we come to your inspiration, open our minds, unlock our spirit, allow us to grow in the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Well, it's summertime. Summertime, a, a time of vacations, a time of going to the shore, a time of getting out there, and yet, and yet, we feel like we're cramped. We feel like we're restricted. We feel like we can't go any place without any kind of mask or whatever. We feel confined as if we might be like in a prison ourselves. But the thing about this is, we have to try to figure out what do we do when we feel trapped? What do we do when we feel like we are in prison ourselves? But the first thing for us is to realize is that however we feel, however we feel like we are enclosed, however we feel like we are trapped, there are people in prisons who have it much worse. Maybe you've seen the news about the San Quentin prison in California. Surely those prisoners have it worse than anything I might have in terms of being trapped or feeling like I'm at home all the time. Or, or maybe if you saw some of the reports of the children along the border in jails, surely they have it more difficult than you and me. So uh, we have to ask ourselves then, what was the situation in the Bible for Paul and Silas? Paul and Silas had gone from Asia Minor across to Macedonia, and in Philippi they were talking to other people. And uh, the people in Philippi were not sympathetic to Paul or Silas. Matter of fact, they were annoyed at the way that Paul and Silas were creating quite a stir. So they arrested Paul and Silas. They uh, took them to the prison, took off their clothes, beat them with all kinds of iron rods. And then, and then the Bible says that they were placed in the innermost parts of the prison. The jailer was not taking any kinds of chances. And so he had their feet in locks. And, and so they couldn't go any place and must have been a difficult situation. So what do Paul and Silas do? Well, Paul and Silas don't complain. They don't have a pity party for themselves. Instead, at that night, around midnight, Paul and Silas begin to pray. Paul and Silas begin to sing hymns, songs. And as they sing these hymns and the songs, the Bible says they didn't just sing by themselves. The prisoners themselves listened to them. And one must believe that for those prisoners, and for Paul and Silas, it was an uplifting experience where all of a sudden they felt freed to be able to worship God. And it certainly was one where it was exhilarating to their spirits. Well, that, that whole episode in the Bible reminds me of one of my favorite movies, the uh, Shawshank Redemption, where Andy, Andy, a white man, and Red, 
a black man become friends. And while they are in the prison, there with many other people, Andy is given the opportunity to go up to the main office. When he goes up there to the main office, he uh, has this inspiration that he wants to lift the spirits of those men out there in the yard. So he takes a record of Mozart's Figaro, and he, he puts it on the record player, of course, that dates him, of course, and then uh, turns the switches on. And as he does this, then there's a whole experience of exhilaration. And there's a clip that I'm going to show you here, and I want you to look at it and realize what kind of an experience this music has on all their prisoners. Andy, do you hear that? I have no idea to this day what those two Italian ladies were singing about. Truth is, I don't want to know. Some things are best left unsaid. I like to think they were singing about something so beautiful it can't be expressed in words and makes your heart ache because of it. I tell you, those voices soared higher and farther than anybody in a great place dares to dream. It was like some beautiful bird flapped into our drab little cage and made those walls dissolve away. And for the briefest of moments, every last man at Shawshank felt free. Get busy living or get busy dying. It was a heavenly experience with the prisoners. It was a, a redemptive experience for the prisoners. And the words that you saw at the last part of the clip are these. Get busy living or get busy dying. You see, it was a heavenly experience for Paul and Silas. And as they were going through this experience, all of a sudden an earthquake happened. A violent earthquake came upon them and the jail was shook from the timbers. And all the prisoners were free and the chains were released. Now, at that moment, at that moment, Paul and Silas could have gotten busy dying. They could have gotten busy getting revenge on the jailers. They could have said to themselves, ha, huh, this is our opportunity to take punishment upon those jailers who punished us. But no, no, 
Paul decided that he would get busy living. He would be in the whole ministry of redemption. And so when the uh, jailer was afraid that everyone was going to escape, Paul cried out to him, oh, don't worry, don't worry. We're all here. We're not going to escape. And the jailer, the jailer was surprised. How is this? The jailer came to them and said, hey, I'm so very grateful. Thank you. Thank you for being here and not running away. And the jailer said, what must I do to express my appreciation, to say thanks to you and thanks to your God? Paul said, obey and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Paul was in the business of get busy living and not get busy dying. And the thing about this is that the, the jailer was so amazed. You can imagine how amazed he was. So he, he took Paul and Silas, he washed down their wounds, he cared for them, and the experience of washing their feet, of cleansing their wounds, reminds me of how Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. What an act of service. What an act of grace. And the jailer was so excited, he took them to, his, to their house. And he welcomed them into their home. And overwhelmed by God's grace, the Holy Spirit came upon them all. And, and Paul said to the jailer, Take this time now to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And so the jailer, and not only the jailer, but the jailer and his whole household, his children, his wife, were all baptized into the faith of Jesus Christ. And the glory about this is that now this man was no longer content to be a jailer only thinking about punishing prisoners. Now he was one who could concentrate on people and caring for others, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. I think about that whole story of uh, baptism. I think about the story of baptism because here at this church, I'm, I'm really grateful that we're looking forward to seven baptisms this fall, this winter, and next spring. That there are families in our congregation who are gonna become a part of the body of Christ through baptism. Their children are gonna be baptized. What a great experience. Now back to the movie, The Shawshank Redemption. At the last part of the movie, Andy is able to escape the prison. And after he crawls through all of the yuck and all of the gutter and all the plumbing, he comes out in a pond and it's raining. And the rain comes down and he's feeling so exalted and lifts his arms to God in a moment of praise. He is cleansed, he is forgiven, he is with God. And although this is not mentioned, I believe it is the same kind of experience that the uh, jailer had, one of a baptism by the Holy Spirit, of Andy feeling free, the redemption of God for his life. Now the thing about this is that the, going back to the Bible, the jailer life, along with that of his family, is transformed, it's changed. Now he could pray, now he could sing hymns, now he could share the good news. Now the Bible story stops there.
But our story here at this church doesn't stop here. I'm really very glad that we have people in our membership who really care about people who are in prisons. The good news continues here in the community of Yardville. It continues in Trenton, in Jamesburg, where Don and his wife Carolyn reach out to people who are in prison. And I, I'm just so thankful for Don's ministry, thankful for Carolyn, because you've unlocked, you've unlocked and shown people like Kyla, myself, and so many others the good news of how God and Jesus Christ can work inside a jail, can work with people after jail and afterwards. So Don, I want you to say a word about the aftercare, the ministry of Jesus Christ that continues on. Thank you, Don. Thank you, thank you for those words. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna add a little story because you just inspired me with-, with Did that. I inspire you? Yeah, I, you expired me, yes. <laughs> a lot of times my wife said, you expired me, but I hope I'm glad you inspired me, okay? Inspired. Thank you, Don. Yes, as uh, Reverend Rob said, my wife Carolyn and I are involved in Jamesburg Prison with the youth in New Jersey State Prison and Garden State Prison. Several years ago in New Jersey State Prison, a group of about four Christian prisoners were framed and they were thrown into the innermost parts of the prison, solitary confinement. And while they were there, they started singing hymns of praise oh, wow. and, pr and praying inspired by Acts 16. And they were made fun of by the non-Christians in there and, and just jeered and whatnot. Well, after a few days, it was found that it was a false charge. So they were let out of, uh, out of solitary confinement. And as they were leaving, one of the jeerers said, hey, would you pray for me? Uh. And uh, it had sunk in, the Holy Spirit. And they came to our re uh, one of our reunions just a few days later, filled with the Spirit. Everybody was singing, shouting amen. So it happens on the outside, too. It's true. It's real. It, uh, it does. Unfortunately, Right now, all of our ministries have come to a stop, and not even relatives of the prisoners are allowed to visit their own relatives, so we're definitely not allowed to go in and run retreats and Bible studies and the things that we do. But there is a form of ministry that does go on. There's a wonderful ministry down in Camden called Seeds of Hope. And part of the ministry is that they have established, I think it's now five different houses for transitional living for Christians who get paroled and come out and have no home to go to. And they work with them and try to find a job for them and eventually so they can afford an apartment. And in their newsletter just a couple days ago, I wanted to share this a pretty neat story. Friday a week ago, they went and they picked up a prisoner who was being released. And they said he, they took him with them to church last Sunday, the Sovereign Grace Church. And it was his first Sunday out. And the prisoner wrote this, how good is God? You got me this phone. The Seeds of Hope must have given him a phone. I just heard from my daughter for the first time in eight years wow. and had an hour and a half talk with my mom for the first time in five years. I'm on cloud nine right now. Thank you and glory be to the Father. And Seeds of Hope writes, please pray for Eric as the Lord puts him on your heart. Thank you for your prayers and support. So I definitely pray for these guys that have been cut off from fellowship and even their chaplains are allowed to go into prison but are not allowed to conduct services to have any kind of contact. So they have to do it all through uh, notes and whatnot. So uh, let's pray for the guys and the gals inside. Amen. God, thank you. Uh, just as the earthquake unlocked the jail for Silas and Paul. 
So your words, the words of you and Carolyn, the chaplains, those in aftercare ministry, unlock the gospel for me, for Kata, for everyone else. Uh, we don't really know what it's like, but hearing from you, we know there's hope, we know there are people who care, and we realize that Jesus said, I was in prison, and you care for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. We're not going to forget. We're not going to forget those prisoners, and thanks to you and Carolyn and so many others, we're going to get busy living instead of get busy dying. Thanks, get God, Carolyn, Kyla. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for these ministries. Thank you, Lord, for the ways that you reach out and can reach into the innermost prisons, that you are still alive in those cells, that you are alive when we feel like we are enclosed, that you are alive with us when we feel like we are staying inside all the time. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that there are no barriers for your Holy Spirit. There are no barriers for the love of Jesus Christ. Walls may seem strong, but your spirit is even stronger. So, Lord, we give you thanks. Thanks for your ministries to those in prison. Thanks for your ministries throughout the world. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I want to thank you all for tuning in today. I want to tell you that next week we have a great treat for you. Don LaCrosse is going to introduce Pastor Samia of Vida Nueva Congregation. And uh, Vida Nueva Congregation shares this uh, building with us. They're a Spanish speaking ministry, they are delightful people. Pastor Samia will bring the message, and her daughters. Uh, Faith and Maya will do a very special dance. So uh, be sure to tune in and have a chance to learn more about the way that God works in all kinds of ministries. And uh, we pray that you'll continue to pray for each other, to support each other, to give of your time, your talent, and your treasure. And I want to say thanks to all the people here I want to thank to Ben and Dan, to Marilyn, to Bob, to Don, and Kyla. May your blessing be upon us all. And now, may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon us always, even where there are walls, even where there are jails, even where there are cells. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.